Okay, this question says determine the inner planar spacing of the following, and it gives four different crystal structures, and each one of these has a different HKL plane that we'd like to figure out the inner placings for. So inner planar spacing, what does that even refer to? Well, let's pull up a VESTA diagram and show what these spacings actually refer to. So I'm going to pull up a simple one. This is body-centered cubic chromium. What I've done here is in VESTA, I've told it to draw the same plane located at different D spacings away from the origin, right? So our origin is going to be in this back corner, this atom. And then we've done D spacings, which are interplanar spacings, the same thing we're going to be solving for in this question, away from that. So again, if you come up here to edit and you draw your lattice planes, um, this is the plane that we're interested in, the 013 plane. And I've done one D spacing. On this one, I've done two D spacings. And this one, I've done three D spacings. So what we're seeing here is that if you were to look at that right dead on, there's a separation distance between these two planes. And it's the same as the separation distance between these. In fact, there's infinite many planes that exist here. And that's important for things like x-ray diffractions because there's diffraction that can occur between these two different planes. So in order to calculate that diffraction, we need to figure out what is the distance between these geometrical sort of planes in the material. And we have some great formulas that help us do that. So shown here is in a table. This table shows you how to calculate the interplanar spacing for all seven different crystal structure systems you might have, right? Whether it's cubic or hexagonal, tetragonal, or thrombic, those are the four simple ones. Or even for the more hard ones, right? Like monoclinic, triclinic, or trigonal, right? These ones get more complicated because you have to take into account the angles between the axes. In something like this, this is a cubic crystal structure, all the angles between these three principal axes are just 90 degrees. It gets harder in the other ones because they're not. So in these four examples that they want us to solve for, they all have 90 degrees between their angles, except for the hexagonal, which has a special case that has 120 degrees. So let's go ahead and dive into this. Let's do the first one. So for question A, for chromium, we're given the lattice parameter and we're given the HKL value for the plane. So how do we figure it out? We're going to use this equation right there. We know that 1 over D squared, and that D is going to correspond to these specific HKLs, so we could even write 0, 1, 3 if we wanted to. That's going to correspond to h squared, which is going to be 0 squared, plus k squared, which is 1 squared, plus l squared, which is 3 squared. All of that divided by just a squared, which in this case is 2.8849 angstroms squared. So when I go ahead and plug that in, I find that that is equal to um, let's see, what well, we can rearrange for D, D for the 0, 1, 3 plane, if we rearrange this, it's going to be equal to the square root of 2.8849 angstroms squared, all divided by 10, since that's what 1 squared plus 3 squared is equal to. When I punch that into my calculator, I get that that's equal to a 0 0.91 two two angstroms. That's our D spacing for that. So let's go ahead and double check that with our VESTA software. Again, that was for chromium. So let's go ahead and pull up chromium and see what that came out to be. Um, chromium with one D spacing that came out to be 0 0.9122. So it's the same value. Let's move on to our next one with copper. Copper, it's now the 111 plane and we have a different lattice parameter, but it's still cubic. Copper is still cubic. Uh, so it's going to be the exact same approach. So we can go ahead and write this. We're going to say that D for the 111 in copper is going to be equal to the square root of, again, it's going to be our lattice parameter squared, 3.615 angstroms squared. Now it's divided by 1 squared plus 1 squared plus 1 squared, which is just 3. We punch that into a calculator. I get that it is equal to 2.087 angstroms. So let's double check that one. Pop over here to Vesta, pull up FCC where I've already input the planes and the last planes. Uh, sure enough for 1D spacing it's 2.087 angstroms. So we're doing good. Let's do the next one. This is now magnesium. Magnesium is, is hexagonal close pack, so it's a hexagonal crystal structure which means we have both A and C lattice parameters. Um, so that's going to change things just a little bit. The formula is now this one. A little more complicated. For example, now 1 over D, and this is going to be for the 132, that's going to be equal to 4 thirds multiplied by 
h squared plus k squared plus h times k, all of this divided by a squared. Meanwhile, it's going to be plus l squared over c squared. Right? So let's write what that would be equal to. Um, 4 thirds multiplied by, okay, hkl in this case. That's going to be equal to 1 squared plus 3 squared plus 3. times 1. All that divided by the A lattice parameter, which is 3.234 angstroms squared, plus our L. L in this case is 2, so it's going to be 2 squared. L squared is 2 squared, over C squared, which is 5.252. 5.252 angstroms, and then we have to square that. So punching all that in, sorry, this is 1 over D squared. Left that off. That's equal to 1.802. So now solving for d, d is going to be equal to the square root of 1 over 1.802 angstroms, right? which I get as a value of 0 0.7448. 0 0.7448 angstroms. Okay. So let's double check that. Over here in our hexagonal crystal structure, if we pull up our lattice planes, let's see, sure enough, 0.74496. Yeah, pretty close to what we're getting. So let's do our last one. This one is sodium, silver, molybdenum oxide. This is actually a distorted spinel. Spinel is cubic, but since this one's distorted, it's now orthorhombic, right? So it has A, B, and C lattice parameters that are all different from one another. And so with the 201, we can go and do this one. Orthorhombic is going to be a relatively simple formula. It's going to be 1 over d h k l squared is equal to the h squared over a squared plus k squared over b squared plus c squared, uh, excuse me, l squared over c squared, put that backwards. So we go ahead and punch these in. Since it's the negative 2, 0, 1, the 0 means that that second term is going to just be going away, right? So we're, we have negative 2 squared, that's just going to be 4, over a squared, which is 10.384 angstroms squared, um, plus 0 squared over b squared, doesn't matter what it is because that's all going to be nothing. And then L squared was 1, 1 squared, so it's just 1, over C squared, and C is 5.5933. 5.5933, that's angstroms squared. When I punch all of that in, I find that it's equal to 0 0.069, 0 0.06906 angstroms. Right? So, oh, that's per angstrom, excuse me. So when we solve for that, D will equal 1 over 0 0.06906 angstroms would actually be up here. Um, punching that in, we get that that's equal to 3.805 angstroms. Okay, let's double check that last one on Vesta. So again, I would have downloaded the sieve file for that. Here's the crystal structure. I go to edit, lattice planes. We've already put that in, and sure enough, 3.805 is one D spacing away. So that's our D spacing for that. And that's how you solve uh, interplanar spacing. You could do so with any other crystal structure if you want. They just are a little bit more complicated in the math.